Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. Well, we're out here today doing a little bit of evening scouting. And while we're busy getting rained on, hopefully you're enjoying the newest installment in our expansion series. Today's bullet is the 170 grain Norma Tip Strike, which is a non-bonded controlled expansion round that uses a mechanical lock to retain the lead core. We've got it loaded up in 30-06, and as always, we'll be testing from 1 to 500 yards. We hope you're excited to see how this bullet performs, because we certainly are. Let's get started. Well, the ammo, Norma, hey, the rifle, the Tika. Yeah, you know, apparently Norma's like Swedish. Oh, isn't the rifle finished though? Yeah. Well. Yeah, I think Team Ohio would be proud. See will hide be proud? Yeah. Yeah, send one up to him. <laughs> I wonder if uh, Crystal Geyser is made in Germany. I don't know. <laughs> don't get too cozy. I'm trying to play a little footsie. <laughs> Alright man, 400. 400. How are you liking the Tika T3? Oh, I love it dude. Yeah. Super smooth. Lightweight. Yeah, it's an X-Mall, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the difference is between the X-Mall and the standard, but, you know, it's a nice rifle. The action's pretty, pretty smooth on that. Oh, yeah. Woo! That looked pretty good in my scope. Yeah, it looks, yeah, looks good to the, to the spotter. All right, man, 500 yards, Norman tip strikes. Let's do it to it. Finishing it out. Yeah, finish strong. Nice hit. Sweet. So overall, expansion is pretty good, especially considering that these are non-bonded, 30 caliber controlled expansion bullets. The tip strike does feature a mechanical locking ring, which allows the jacket to clamp down on and retain the core. In our past experience, 30 caliber mechanically locked bullets tend to be hit or miss. They often seem to fail in a, shall we say, inconsistent fashion. It's also been the general trend here on the channel that 30 caliber non-bonded controlled expansion rounds do not stay together too well, period. The tip strike seems to be, from what we've tested, one of the few exceptions to that. At all ranges, the jacket retained the core, and when we get into the close-ups, you'll notice at a couple ranges, it looks like the core is just about to come loose, and yet it did not fail. Before we look at those, I want to mention the estimated impact velocities were provided with JDM Ballistic Software using the tip strikes figures and our relevant environmental data from the day we shot. Now under the 100 we have fantastic pancaking, pretty even, just about textbook for a controlled expansion projectile. The 200 is a bit less even, but good peeling back of the jacket, and of course great retention of the core. The 300 is one of those ranges where it looks like it's about to come apart, but the mechanical lock is doing a good job of keeping it together. 400 is where it starts to become noticeable that expansion is ending further up the shank. 500 is very similar to 4, albeit with a little less flattening of the leg 
upside, but still a good result. Moving on to the graphs, the expansion figures are pretty solid. For the first four ranges, we maintain more than two times the original size, dipping down to 1.8 at 500 as we drop below 2,000 feet per second. This gave us overall expansion of 2.09 times original size, which is fantastic, along with a relatively low standard deviation, which is really cool to see in a non-bonded lead core bullet. Weight is pretty consistent, and again, what surprises me is how even it is, especially when compared to other comparable types of bullets such as a Nosler Ballistic Tip, Sierra Game King, or a Hornady Interlock. Overall weight retention is 75%, which I'm very pleased with, and again the standard deviation is low. The tip strike was developed by Norma to provide stopping power, along with penetration deep enough to reach the vital organs of game. To allow it to drive deep into an animal, it utilizes a mechanical lock which in our testing effectively kept the jacket and core from separating. Now one big question that I had going into this test is, with how good the bond strike is, why would I ever want to buy a tip strike? And looking at our graphs, that's a bit tough to answer because the bond strikes we ran in 180 grains through our 300 wind mag had average expansion of 2.83 and average weight retention of 82%. The tip strikes had average expansion of 2.09 and weight retention of 75%. Now the bond strikes were moving at over 3,100 feet per second and the tip strikes were moving at around 2,850. But what we can surmise is that if the tip strikes had been moving 250 feet per second faster, they probably would have lost more weight. So why would the option which retains less weight and has lower expansion figures be more desirable. Well, owing to our testing format and the medium we use to catch bullets, water, we can't get an exact measurement on penetration. But we can say that subjectively the tip strikes went through more jugs than the bond strikes did. They were punching one to two rows deeper than the bond strikes at all ranges fired. The bond strike uses electromagnetic bonding in which the lead core is fused or welded to the jacket, which makes it extremely tough and causes the projectile to lose very little weight upon entry. The caveat to this bonding process is that manufacturers can be limited in the lead alloys they use. Generally, the lead has to be almost pure. It can't really be strengthened with antimony or other elements. The soft lead core fused to the jacket allows the round to open up massively, giving extremely wide expansion and great weight retention, whether at high or low velocities. The downside is that it may slow down much sooner than other kinds of bullets, so theoretically an extremely heavily armored game, it could potentially not punch as deep as other projectiles. The upside is with how wide it expands and how quickly it decelerates, every last foot-pound of energy is going to be transferred to the prey, very likely causing hydrostatic shock and severe central nervous system disruption. On the other hand, the tip strike utilizes a mechanical lock, which allows the manufacturer to play around with the lead alloy in the core. So a bullet like the tip strike may be harder, and upon impact definitely would shed more weight than a bonded bullet and wouldn't open up as wide, but it would punch deeper, which is something we experienced. So the benefit of the tip strike is theoretically a narrower, deeper wound channel than its brother the bond strike. Another factor is cost. Traditionally, bonded core bullets are more expensive and budget-minded shooters may prefer non-bonded hunting ammunition. That doesn't seem to be the case here. In doing some looking online, both the bond strike and tip strike in similar weights and diameters appear to be comparably priced. In my opinion, you couldn't go wrong with either projectile. We are looking forward to doing a whole lot more testing with each of these projectiles here on the channel, and if you'd like to join us for those tests and more, make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. If you got something out of today's presentation, consider helping us out with a like. We'd love to hear from anyone who's got experience using these bullets, and if you do feel free to drop that or your opinion on these rounds in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.